what is the EU Mercosur agreement? What does it mean for environmental policy? And which are the challenges ahead for both regions? Our today's topic is about more than just a narrow subject matter. It's about trade, about economics and politics, and about environment and climate. So a free trade agreement is basically an agreement by which parties grant each other preferential trading conditions with the objective to intensify trade, relig trade relations, which means to trade more goods and services with one another, which is then supposed to translate into economic growth in the, in the parties that participate in the agreement. And of course, this begs the question of um, the impact um, this rise in commercial activities has on the environment. So will there be a corresponding rise in CO2 emissions? Will there be any other environmental degradations uh, as a consequence to the coming into force of, of a new trade agreement? Well, you probably have read um, along these last two years, a series of, of bad news coming from Brazil, forest fires, increasing deforestation, also associated with that, a lot of violence against indigenous people. Unfortunately, in the last than two years, uh, at office, the um, 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 Bolsonaro's administration took the deforestation, annual rates of deforestation in the Amazon to increase in 47% last year the, for the period between August 2019 and July 2020. At, uh, more than 11,000 square kilometers were uh, registered uh, as clear cut completed deforestation only in the Amazon region. Another uh, commitment there is included in, uh, uh, in the, the trade and sustainable development is the, the implementation of Paris Agreement on protecting the climate. Uh, in 2019 alone, uh, the, the uh, Brazilian greenhouse gas emissions were, uh, were um, almost 10% above 2018 levels. It was the highest in 13 years and in 2020, some estimates indicate that we could reach the end of 2020 uh, having uh, an, an, a new increase in greenhouse gas emissions while the world has gone through a redu re reduction in greenhouse gas emissions because of the economic impacts of pandemics. Uh, we used to say that uh, environmental criminals, unfortunately, they, do, they were not affected by the pandemics. Uh, last year, Brazil was among the, the, the countries that had to submit a new uh, set of commitments under, under Paris Agreement. And uh, Brazil was the only country in the world to, to submit a new so-called NDC, nationally determined contribution for the Paris Agreement with commitments to 2030. And the, the, the submission by Brazil is the only one to, that uh, reduces the level of climate ambition. This uh, is the lowest budget in 21 years. And so you know, the, the level of commitment and the level of actions are, are, are not going to increase and to say to put us in a better situation than where we are right now. Rather than integrating sustainability aspects throughout the entire agreement, uh, labor and environmental content is placed in a separate chapter, which I don't think is a, is a good idea. And rather than conditioning trade on the basis of sustainability standards, these chapters focus on the domestic law and policy in the respective parties to the agreement. Um, and the provision themselves are quite weak mostly preambular declarative language that is not enforceable, also a lot of best endeavor comments. Um, and even the provisions that are a bit more robust in their legal bindingness, they tend to be very broadly phrased and therefore their effectiveness is, is questionable. Corona the, or COVID-19 is um, uh, has a severe impact in Latin America. Um, I just brought you some figures. Um, 18 million infections were detected in the region, um, more of, of 12 million in the Mercosur, 500,000 deaths uh, in Latin America and Caribbean and uh, more than 290,000 in the Mercosur countries. Um, COVID-19 um, brought um, Latin America uh, in uh, 60 million people into poverty and the IMF estimates a full recovery in economic output will be reached in 2023 and in GDP per capita in 2025. And I believe that these circumstances that the COVID-19 pandemic um, uh, created 
uh, make the region particularly vulnerable to prefer fast economic growth over sustainable when uh, recovery or during its recovery. And with regard to gender neutrality, the agreement, um, Yuma, um, the uh, agreement text mentions a lot the promotion of gender equality. Now, this is of course a very good objective. However, trade policies and agreements not, are not per se gender neutral and um, they affect women and men differently and they increase, can increase gender biases and discrimination. And I think um, the EU should po put, a, put a, yeah, an emphasis here because gender neutrality in trade and trade agreements can boost gender equality. Um, for instance, by developing gender lenses um, for business sectors which are affected by uh, trade agreements. I just like to add that when we were discussing uh, our proposals in the academic statement, we insisted in focusing not only on sanction and enforcement, but also more on cooperation, trust building, even technical assistance and uh, share and co-responsibility. So I think this is a, a good takeaway also for other future negotiations. And with that, I would like to uh, thank you, our speakers, again, for the great presentations and the great discussion.